Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm bringing you a vintage rose card today, which is number 12 in my watercolor flowers series. Never thought I'd get to number 12. And I'm using the penned rose stamp set from All to New. It's got nice heavy lines on it, so it's really super for things like Copics. If you color with Copics and you struggle with your ink bleeding out from under thin lines on stamps, these are great ones for practicing. So those who, who love to color with Copics, this might be a stamp set for you to consider. I've stamped a number of them onto my Arches watercolor rough paper with some VersaFine toffee ink, which is waterproof. And I'm painting the background first with buff titanium in the Daniel Smith paints. I'm gonna be using all Daniel Smith in this. I'm kind of using an idea that I saw on a piece of fabric and it had this sort of buff color on the outside of the flowers and right along the edge of these kind of whitish roses, whitish brownish roses, it had more dark color. And then it kind of faded out to a lighter color in the background. And I thought that was really beautiful the way the fabric looked and I wanted to see if I could replicate that. And that's what I'm trying for here. The second brown color is actually all the stuff left over on my palette from my last project mixed together. You'll find that if you mix a whole lot of colors together, you generally get some sort of a brown. And that's what I'm gonna be using for most of this initial brown color. It's just using up paint. So if you ever need a brown, that's a great way to do it and clear off your palette at the same time. So I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness all the way around and I'm basically tapping the color into this wet buff titanium background. I'm using a really giant brush because I saw on a video somewhere and I can't remember where, the larger brush you use, the better because it's gonna get you to loosen up a little bit. So I'm experimenting just to see if I can paint this with a giant brush and how that's gonna work. I decided to go for one of the brown colors in my palette, which was some burnt umber and start to really put a lot more of that color around the very edge of the flowers because it was not dark enough for me in the reference piece that I had seen that, that fabric. It was just really dark and I knew this was going to dry back and lighten up significantly. So I decided I was going to go for it and try to add some really dark color to it. I had tried this whole idea a few times a bunch of different ways and I was nervous that I was going to once again mess up. But and FYI, if you do something like this and you practice it and the background doesn't come out, practice your flowers first and use all those pieces of paper to practice on the flowers because there's no sense in wasting that piece of paper if you've already got it stamped up. The leaves I'm plowing on with now and I'm using sap green for the light green and a deep sap for the darker green. And I wanted to show you deliberately on this one, I used more water in the mixture with the deep sap. So I get one color of darkish green, but then later on, I'm going to use a heavier color and then I can go over this. You can always darken up and add another layer of something. It's just a little harder to lighten. I'm going to speed this up so we can get moving on, but I'm adding just a little bit of a shadow. Now the reference piece that I saw had very graphical, lines in the leaves and things and that's what I was going to try to replicate here. This is the deep sap with more concentration of the pigment than the water so you can get lots of different looks from the same colors of paint. You don't have to buy a bunch of different colors in order to do this. You could even use a heavy concentrated pigment of the, the initial sap green to try to create a secondary color but I'm creating some little lines, little veins, like I had seen in the reference piece and adding those to the card. Next are the flowers. Now I skipped that first flower here in the video because I did a lot of struggling, a lot of fighting with it. So I thought you'll learn more from the second and third flowers. And I decided I was going to paint in the buff titanium, leave some white areas and then drop in the burnt umber. And that's how I created that. And you can see the color is just kind of moving out from the dark area into the lighter. And what I found was even though, you know, I get those sort of little striations, if I went back in with the buff titanium afterward and added a little bit more to it, then it softened the blend. 
And that was just something I learned as I was doing this, this whole project, trying to figure out a, a way to color these roses so that it would match the picture that was in my head from seeing that fabric. And you can get ideas from fabrics, from home decor, like when you're shopping for your next sofa, keep an eye out for fabric patterns that can be inspiring to you. Take pictures of them and keep them in your phone for inspiring your next card, color combinations, different kinds of things like that, because there's inspiration all around us. So I'm adding the shadows generally right along the lines toward the inside of each of the leaves, each one of the petals, because that's going to give them that depth that looks like it's going into the inside of the flower. But I'm not giving them massive depth, just a little bit. And the other thing that I noticed as I was doing this, and I was trying to do a little bit of it deliberately, but it just happens when you're doing watercolor, is that each one of these flowers will be painted slightly differently even though they're the same flower, they're the same stamp. When I did my stamping, I did some masking so that some of the leaves appeared in front of flowers and some appeared behind and stamped the flowers themselves at different angles. And that meant that they each look like they're slightly different. And the fact that I don't watercolor each one of them exactly the same means that they look a little bit more natural. Like they're not same flower, same flower, same flower. And also, when you do multiple flowers of the same one on a card or in a painting, it gives you three opportunities to practice your technique on that particular object. So it, that's one reason why I like having a whole background full of flowers, a whole background full of something, stamp multiples of them, because it gives you more opportunity to learn by trying what happens if I add more of this color? What happens if I add this color after I add that color? What happens if I reverse the order? And you can test out a lot of different things in a short period of time without having to kind of start over on a whole separate card, that sort of thing. For the finishing off of my card, I stamped my sentiment using my Misty so I could get a multicolored sentiment to stamp on the card properly. And I adhered it to a card base using some dimensional adhesive, and I left a little of the card base showing on the top, bottom, and right-hand side. If you'd like to see more in the Watercolor Flowers series, you can click on any one of these three, because each one of them will lead you to the Watercolor Flowers playlist on YouTube. And if you'd like to see more, you can click on more on the blog or in the link in the doobly-doo because I'm hoping to get a Copic colored version of the same card to pop onto the blog before this goes live. You can also hit the subscribe button if you have not yet so far, because I put out three videos a week and you don't want to miss any. I will see you guys next time. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.